Hello, hello, hello. What's up, everybody? Hey, everyone. This track is so dark. <laughs> now that I put it on, I feel like I should have put something different today. Different vibe. I don't know. This is kind of changing my headspace a little bit. That's all right. Who's in the chats? We got Acid Bat. Acid Bat was first. You're in Denver, are you? Capers Junior 716. It's all right. You can be first next time. Just got to be right on point. Just do it the day before. Or even the week. It's actually, you know, this, sometimes these are up like, you know, the event is up like days before. You just got to keep an eye out. Netrunner, what's up? Asatenko. Jochem Tolinar, did I get that right? Keter Bosch. I am just a fan. I, that's Simple Sam. Grizz, Grizz Christofferson. I'm so glad that this is becoming a favorite routine for you. All right. Funk Tour is here. Luminous Cloud, Martin Crockett, Pector Zeraga. hello, hello, Muo is here, Manuel Gloda, Ben Colts, of course Thomas from 343 is in the house, literally in the house, he's in the other room. <laughs> wow, we got all sorts of people in here, Meditation Main, Gabor Purga, did I get that right? I always feel like I'm butchering people's names. Asatenko, M.A. I'm going to say everybody. 20 go to 10. Got some basic going on there. Matsky from Glasgow. UK Strings. Nice. Sean Hodson made it. All right. Just in time for a breakdown. Let's get it started. Welcome, everybody. It is me, John Selway, here for 343 TV, brought to you by 343 Labs Music Production School here in New York City and in Berlin and online. It's busy over here today. We got classes going on. I think we're like moving things around. We're installing things on the walls or like reconfiguring. We got events coming up. You know, it's the holidays. Sometimes there's like a rush of activity before the holidays. So yeah, there's a lot going on. I got my hair cut. I'm wearing my glasses. I got the studious look going on today. I'm wearing my nerdy Centaur shirt. I love those guys. Do you guys ever watch the the document, like the, the videos they make on YouTube? These Centaur videos, when they do features on different synthesizers, they're great. They did one on, um, on FM synthesis. I mean, they, it wasn't just the DX7, but like one of the coolest like breakdowns of how FM synthesis works is buried in the middle of one of these kind of documentary videos they made. So yeah, check them out if you don't know who. Yeah, just look for Synthar. These guys are legends in the, in the synth hardware world. Uh, anyway, that was a little digression. You know what we do. You know we teach music production classes. I do synthesis and sound design. We have Ableton live production classes. We do logic production classes. We do songwriting and composition and music theory and all sorts of things, right? So if you're interested, maybe, you know, check us out. You've got the links in the description below. You know where to look for the information to find out what courses we have going on. Uh, January, I'm doing another, uh, you know, the short six class uh, making techno course, kind of a beginner get into making techno production course. If anybody's sort of new to the game and you want to get a little more focused and work with me on a regular basis and we can check out your music and stuff like that, you know, think about it. You can, again, sign up for this stuff in the link below. And, um, yeah, I've got synthesis course starting again in January, both online and in person here in New York. And for those of you in Germany, in Berlin, you know, that's another spot you want to check out and go see what we're doing there. There's all sorts of things happening all the time. Join our Discord. Uh, I've got a channel in there for feedback. As you know, sometimes we, we've been doing feedback sessions here on the stream. I need to do more of that. I definitely need to do more of that. I, I, I really want to do it with guests. It's more fun with guests. And lately, it's been sort of hard to pin down the guests. So I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I got some things in the pipeline. We're going to do it. We're going to do electro feedback again, finally. And we'll do another techno session as well. 
And uh, yeah, so keep your eye out on there. If you ever want to get some feedback, look for the Selway uh, feedback channel in our Discord. Again, the link is in the description if you want to join that. If you haven't already, I know a bunch of you have already because I've seen you. You were there. I gave you feedback. All right. Let's see. What are you guys talking about in the chat before we get into it? And before I get into what we're going to do today, which is we're going to play a little game together. Well, not exactly, but uh, I'm going to try to be a little bit more interactive today. And we're going to see, I'll explain some more, but let's, let's see what you guys are saying in here. Matt Clark is excited for some techno learning. Yes, that is why we do this. That is what 343 Labs is all about. We're here for the learning, for your learning. And we like to share what we know with you. And I like to share what I'm working on and fooling around with in, in the music world here, in the techno and electro worlds here on the stream almost every Saturday. All right. Let's see. Sean, yes, I am feeling better. I'm a little bit in a better mood. Um, it's been crazy. So many people getting uh, sick nowadays. Like here in New York, it's like, you know, they're starting to say, wear your masks again. Like, we got to be careful. It's not just COVID. It's the flu and all these other things, the, the rep respiratory stuff that like, Little kids and elderly people and immune compromised people are, need to be worried about. Like, man. All right. But we all know about that. That's like the background of our lives. And thanks for asking. I am definitely feeling better. Uh, Acid Bat says, I'm scared of feedback. Don't be afraid. We don't bite. And my whole, I mean, this was a thing. I talked about this with Lag when we did the feedback recently is that, you know, we say nice things. We say what we like. That's like, the, that's the format. First, I say, what's good? What's working? What, you know, positive reinforcement. And we butter you up to get ready for the, well, there's some stuff maybe you can work on. But then we try to be constructive and, uh, you know, like giving you solid things that you can focus on and, and improve. Like as, as we try to be as, as uh, specific as we can. I mean, that's sort of what we need to do, right? So don't be afraid. We don't, we don't bite. And, uh, uh, oh, Thomas looks like there's an invalid invite message in the discord link. Maybe we need to update that. I don't know if they expire after a while, but let's check on that. Thanks for letting us know. And I'm getting some suggestions here. <laughs> I'm getting some suggestions for what, what, what we should do. It would be nice if we could do some fun techno, like lucid flow. Lucid flow is a good label. It's like, deeper techno right they do lots of like dubby kind of positive sounding groovy techno i'm i'm up for that um who knows what will happen today what will happen today partially depends on you guys all right some new names in here which is great max wild our fearless leader is here of course and uh, mark curie welcome psyched to have you here and learning and loving techno i think that's why we're all here together because we like to learn and we love techno or electro and electro for sure and uh all right hey shelly nice to have you back you're asking about alerico style techno i am not sure what that is i think that must be an artist i'm not aware of there's so many people making music of all kinds, but just when I look at all the new releases for, for electronic music and for techno, it's just like so hard to keep up. So I'm going to have to research that. So anyway, hi, Doug Smith. Yes, we love dubby techno. Always love dubby techno. Now, today it's a bit of a tight rope walk for me. And that's, uh, that's what I say when I'm like, all right, we're not sure how the show's going to go today. But basically... I have a kick drum and I, I have like a little clip of a drum loop, which I'm like iffy on. And I thought it would be fun to, tr we'll try to interact a little bit together today and see what you are, you can suggest. Now I can't promise I can, you know, just crank out every little suggestion that you guys throw in here. We need to be reasonable, but I figured we can like, think of some basic ideas of a direction together, right? Like a little bit of remote collaboration here. And all right, we're thinking techno. I've got a kick drum. Just the tone and energy of the kick drum alone may set the vibe, right? It, you know, like a light kick or a heavy kick or a distorted kick or a long kick or a short kick. That can already determine a lot of the flavor of the vibe of a track, of course. So, you know, it's pretty generic. You can hear it, right? It's just kind of 
punch in a way there. And we, you know, we can tweak that a little bit. Um, doing sound design, maybe, you know, I'm thinking maybe we can lean on some samples. It could be fun to just like, if I just sort of quickly browse through some sounds and then we'll see what comes up. But if you guys start thinking about some suggestions of a direction, and I just want to see what we can do together. So let's see what you guys are already saying. Thomas Dietz is saying, how about some house? Max is saying, is this a jazz stream? Max, I could pull up that saxophone loop we did that you, gave, that you did the sample challenge a while back. That could be kind of funny. And uh, let's see. I'm not getting, I'm, I'm waiting for some suggestions. Uh, some, are there some other new names in here? Oh, I've seen, I'm, there's some regulars coming back. Silver Knobs is here. Trevice, Trevarsi is here. Glad you like the shirt. And uh, David Bora, hello. And uh, were you here earlier? I don't remember. Gabriel Vallea, perhaps a dark Bergheim techno for a gloomy Saturday afternoon. All right, that's a suggestion. All right, I'm, that's one suggestion. We got dark Bergheim techno, right? That's going to be stark. It's going to be heavy. Maybe not too busy, not too many layers, but just like kind of driving, maybe a little industrial. Maybe not too synthy, maybe more noisy, percussive. That's sort of what that evokes for me, but we'll see. Um, Netrunner is saying... Positive dub techno would be good. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like that, that. You know, that was that suggestion before. Um, all right, so we've got, that's two directions to consider. Dark, bear kind. I got, I'll be honest, I'm not necessarily feeling dark, aggressive, bear kind vibe today. You know, intro music notwithstanding. Silver Knob says, zero regular melody. What does that mean? Zero regular melody, just only noise? <laughs> all right. Hector says arpeggiated bass. Okay. Arpeggiated bass is doable. Actually, I was thinking the other day about doing something kind of 16th note arpeggiated sort of driving bass thing. I could get down with that. And, uh, hmm. Doug Smith says, I bought the chromophone. Oh, did you get, did you get the chromophone three? I haven't gotten the, gotten the update yet. I'm still on two, but yeah, that's a nice one. So physical modeling sound could be interesting. That would be good for clanky metallic noises, actually, possibly for something industrial. So that, that's a, that's a good, uh, good, uh, wow. See what I mean by tightrope walking? You guys are throwing, I'm seeing you. Oh, the ideas are coming in and I'm starting to go, uh oh, I opened up a can of worms here or actually Pandora's box or something like that. Max Wild wants melodic. Hmm. All right. So, all right, I'm going to say hold off on the suggestions because I've got a whole bunch to consider here. All right. Now, let's see. We'll switch over to the main scene here shortly. What's jumping out at me? All right. I like the arpeggiated bass idea. So, we need a synth. Let's go with wavetable. Try to keep it simple on the plug-in side here. And um, we need the, the wavetable doesn't have an arpeggiator built into it, so we're gonna take uh, the arpeggiator and put that in front. And uh, am I literally okay? This was another thing I was thinking about: is uh, not as I add these ideas to kind of go with try to go with the first thing that comes up. So like as soon as I play a note or hear something that happens, if, if, as soon as it happens, just throw it in there and see what, you know, just try not to get in my own way. It, 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 it's, in a way, this is kind of like a game you could play with yourself sometime, especially if you're kind of still figuring out how, how, to, how to do, do this, right? Is just go with your gut. And like as soon as you hear one thing that maybe has potential, just do it and just get it in there. All right, so... This may or may not work, this approach, but I just played a D. Now it's a bit high maybe for a bass line, so let's bring that down an octave. And all right, since it's, it's an arpeggiator, I'm gonna have to add some more notes to this. All right, so let's do 16th notes and let's make it a, let's find a brighter, brighter waveform. All right. 
it's still kind of buzzy, but we might need to add in a lower layer to this. But I liked when I was moving the wavetable back and forth, it's doing this little kind of phasey thing. So let's, uh, let's go with that. Let's throw an LFO on, uh, on the sawtooth, on the, I'm sorry, on the wavetable position. Turn the re-trigger off and slow it down. That's the warp, I'm sorry. I want the position. See, I'm already going cross-eyed. Put in the sub-oscillator there. Let's bring that an octave down. Well, that's really low. All right, I'm gonna. I'm trying to get the the sound and the groove and the shape of it right first, and then we'll do some melodic variation to create a bass line that's moving forward. All right, we want to play around with the. Uh, I think I want a shorter note length here, and let's play around with the envelope. It's got dark. Actually, you know, I was saying, someone said dark bear guy in techno before, and all, now all of us, I was saying no, and all of a sudden it's going in this dark, ominous direction. So we're going to have to work on this a little bit. All right, you know what? Maybe bringing it down that low is one of the things that's doing it. Let's go back up again. All right, it's making it darker. Put some envelope modulation on it. I want it to be thicker. Let's put in some notes. That's techno, kind of. I don't mind that. All right, so. Again, remember, we're going. We're just going to kind of go with it and not anal uh, go too crazy on analyzing it. I'm just going to stick. That's a melody. I'm going to stick with it. Let's shape the sound a little bit more. Let's pump it up a little bit. almost too low when I bring the sub oscillator down. I mean, it's nice and rumbly though. Let's see what happens if I change the, the waveform. <laughs> Those of you wanting uh, deep dubby positive vibes, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is just what's happening. Yeah, I'm still not sure about that sub. Still thinking about it. We're finding kind of a range to work with with the filter. All right, that's an element. I think that's an element, for better or for worse. Okay, we've got to start. Now I'm going to come back and check into the chat a little bit again here. Luminous Cloud says, oh, Doug Smith is, <laughs> Doug is like, you cannot escape the darkness. Luminous Cloud says, sounds like an Oliver baseline. Do you mean Oliver Chesler? Toby Whelan says, filter drive and detune. Yeah, I was starting to think of that. I got the filter drive in there. The detuning, yeah, we could get the unison going on, or I could uh, have another oscillator in there, you know, but keeping it simple. There's your... Sound a little more full and polished that way, right? OK. 
Okay, that's a good one. Capers is saying play with the velocity. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. We're going to do that. Play with the velocity. So it's like not just all the time. It has a bit more of a groove to it. I like that. Okay. Oval is saying the sub is muddy on my system. Yeah. Do you mean when I had it lower, when it was too low? Because, yeah, I'm going to try not to get too caught up in like mixing, especially over your speakers that I cannot hear. <laughs> we'll fix the mix later. I want to kind of just go with raw vibe first and, you know, how it feels in the moment. If there's any issues, like the, mu the muddy and the sub, whatever, you know, we'll fix that later. All right. Noir is saying make it a little more wobbly. Okay. That's cool. Doug is saying time for some clangy stuff. All right. And we got Ketterbosch saying split the bass in low and mid-high and process them differently. Right. That's a good idea. But I want to, like, add more elements to this. Um, all right, so what did we have? We had like play with the velocity and making it a little bit more wobbly. Maybe we'll do both at the same time. And basically that's like m more movement, right? Okay. Okay. So we can assign velocity to what? The filter, the volume, or, or amplitude. It already is controlling the amplitude a little bit. Let's do the filter a little bit. How do we do this with an with a precisely with a arpeggiator, right? Like it's I'm just whatever you know. The arpeggiator is gonna play through whatever uh, um, velocity each note is doing. It's not gonna do velocity per uh, note though. So if I want to do that, I mean, well, let's just try it this way first. Let's see what happens if we just change the velocity of the chord notes going into. All right, that's not terrible. But you see what I mean? It's limited to like, it only sets the velocity once and then it stays that way throughout the pattern. Although it is kind of cool to like play with those. If you wanted to kind of radically change the groove suddenly that would be a way to do it all right so that's one way to handle it all right so they're all sort of close together there it's like subtle if i wanted to, i could use a, a, a velocity device here and randomize it That's not what I wanted. I want velocity. All right, so this. So that's giving it that evolving, like, rolling kind of thing, right? It's definitely a little, it's not wobbly in terms of LFO, but it's, it's changing its, its groove shape randomly, which could be cool. said about going with our gut and feeling it and then going forward i like where it is right now i and i'm you know you guys are giving me suggestions but i'm the old uh, the buck stops here all right let's see hector says that's so groovy i love it all right side uh, uk string saying side chain compression and modulate the threshold interesting where it's sometimes it's side chaining ducking and sometimes it isn't that's kind of cool idea all righty nice Look at this. I, made on Earth. What a nice comment. Thanks, you. I'm subscribed to the best techno YouTube producers available, but you are the only one that makes real techno for sure. Anything you touch becomes techno. Ah, what a high praise. Thank you so much, Made on Earth. I really appreciate that. Thanks so much. And then, of course, also electro, right? We do electro too. But yes, techno. Thank you. I really, really appreciate that. Okay. 
Acid Bat likes the randomness. Very good. And then this is the other thing I wanted to get at, is, is, is the other thing we could do to control the velocity, is I could just capture that MIDI out of the arpeggiator into a MIDI clip and then control it precisely. But good suggestion. That is definitely a way to handle that. And then I could you know make the groove exactly how I want. But I like this sort of random variation with the velocity uh, device here after the arpeggiator. So I'm going to go with that and then move forward. I think we should start moving forward. And uh, Doug is uh, suggesting a 303. That's great. Um, Keter Bosch has another great suggestion here. Bounce the MIDI and use on percussion. Really? All right. Okay. All right. That's crazy. Let's try it. We're going to try that. And uh, Doug, maybe a 303. Maybe we'll go in the acid -y direction. Okay. But I like this idea of taking, and this is a, almost generative, right? We've got, I played a couple notes going through the arpeggiator and it's, and then the velocities are being randomized and that's creating kind of a groove, right? We could take that same MIDI and have it play another sound and they can kind of go together and I could bounce it or I could do it in real time even. So, all right, that's a good suggestion. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> might go horribly wrong. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It depends on the sound. Like, it, it might not just be drum sounds. What if it's like just some kind of noise coming out of a synth or something? All right. I keep for, you know what? Let's switch. All right, now we can see better. Sorry. You know what? I'm just, just for fun, this drum loop that I threw in there totally randomly before the stream. Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, no, wrong vibe. Yeah, I'm not going to go with that. Goodbye. All right, we're going to keep this clean. We don't need loops. We don't need samples. Maybe we need samples. We'll see. All right, so what you mean, I think, is take that MIDI and play percussion with it. I'm going to say MIDI from wavetable track, right? Now I got that MIDI coming in. Do we like, um, you right, this is where it might go horribly wrong. Like if I go, you guys hear the preview by the way? If I just pick some random drum kit. <laughs> All right, probably that kind of acoustic percussion is gonna, not gonna be quite right. And he's got some hip hop kit there. All right. I'm just going to throw that one in there and cross your fingers. <laughs> Interesting. Playing a, a snare and a clap. I didn't intend for this to turn into like a live MIDI device in a uh, tutorial, but that's kind of what's happening here. I'm okay with that. It's not awful. That's good. Let's see what's on, what effects are built into this kit. Obviously, it's playing syncopation like from it's playing the rhythm from the bass, right? And so it fits like the rhythm fits. I like this one. Let's put a. All right, I, I already feel like I need an open hi hat on top of this, but yeah. It's not exactly bouncing the MIDI, but I'm using the MIDI from the bass. I mean, I could have also just copied that, but bouncing would be like, you know, empty MIDI track and just record. Right, and then if I take that and put it on here and I don't bring the MIDI in from external, right? Same thing. But now I can go in here and...
go in and see what I'm doing. Or I could like add a hi-hat. Not sure about this hi-hat though. Just just for sake of argument. Nope. <laughs> Spaz fingers. I got a groove. I told you. <laughs> I told you it was just going to happen. We were just going to take a couple of ideas and run with it. You guys should, you know, think think about what else we could do with this. Now, I'm starting to get my own ideas now that I've got a solid solid foundation here. But um I I like this idea of taking that MIDI that we started with and keep using it. So, and it's like an maybe like an easy way to keep all the parts kind of tied together. And you know, we don't, I guess at some point we're going to have to make changes. Like I, you know, I, I re I resampled that MIDI and then added the hi-hats to it. Right. Actually, we should have a version of that that doesn't have the hi-hats in it. So I can switch back and forth between them, but I could take that same melody and have it play something else or use it as a starting point for something else. Anyway, we're at the halfway point about of the show. Let's just chill out here and think about what we're doing and you know kind of evaluate the situation and also i should remind you that this is 343 tv brought to you by 343 labs and 343 studio right that's the other thing we do we, we do our music production our long courses and in, in the classroom you know and in person and uh online right we've got these long big courses but we also have our subscription thing that we do 343 studio uh where you you know you pay a a rather reasonable monthly fee and you have access to all sorts of content and you can also do things like sign up for short 15 minute feedback sessions mentoring sessions with almost any of our instructors right uh, I love doing that actually I love like getting to hear you know some of you guys that are watching the stream have been you know in 343 studio and uh, or even in some of the classes and it's great to you know see you and talk to you in person or or you know face to face online and then uh, hear your music that you're working on and give you some kind of one-on-one -on -one feedback. So that's, that's like a really valuable thing, I think, that we can offer for a pretty reasonable amount of money. So if you're not ready to like dive into like however many, you know, a couple thousand, thousands of dollars it is to do however many big courses or whatever, big programs, you can just keep it kind of easier on your pocketbook, but still get some real-time interaction and instruction and access to content that we're always kind of working on here at 343. So Good. Let's check in with the chat. And uh, we've, got some su we've got some new suggestions here. Live Society says reverse pad swells. That's good. Actually, you know what? This is something that I do when, I, uh, when I'm working on something and I want some ideas as, you know, I mean, just writing down notes, but rather than having to, you know, have a notebook and paper or whatever, I'll just like make an empty track and title it what that thing was. So let's say reverse pad swell, right? That could be a good transitional effect. I think that I, that I like that, you know, some kind of before like a, a something comes in and out at a, at a, at a, at a breakdown or transition or something like that. Um, that's a good, good uh, suggestion. What else have we got here? A little chord. You got some who's talking about chords. Let's see. A little chord here. All right. Noir is saying a little chord here and there would be cool as long as it fits the rest of the composition. Yeah, like a stab or like a, a pad and a break. I agree. Some kind of, you know, and this is a stylistic choice. Like if I want to keep this more kind of dark and EBM and, and driving and, and, you know, and when, by EBM, I mean electronic body music, like that kind of more late 80s industrial dance music kind of vibe with the 16th note sharp bass lines, you know, like old Nitzareb and stuff like that. I might not want to add big chords to it, but, you know, big stabs or an occasional harmonic element I think could be cool. But let's see, like a, I'll just put in chord here and we'll see how that works out. That's another good idea. 
Southern Outpost says needs a donk. Put a donk in it. Wait, wasn't there, what was that? There's like a donk thing, right? Wasn't that like a style of, te- of music? Like, <laughs> put a donk on it put, or something like that. I forget. But a donk. All right. Donks are easy. Anyway, all right, that's, I'm writing it in there. I'm not saying we're going to do it. I'm just writing it in there. Resample the sounds. Yeah, resampling, that kind of thing. Muo says pads. Yeah, I think like, you know, we said maybe something like that. A little reverb on that percussion, Capers uh, what Jr. says. Hey, May says maybe shift the open hat away from the offbeat by a 16th note. That's an interesting idea. Have it be less typical than the 8th note upbeat kind of hi-hat. And... um I think yeah, we still have some good, uh, some 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 good things to move forward with here. So, all right, Ketterbosch is more donk, but yeah, you know, you you started as off. I think like you with the, you know, going from well, no, who was it that I forgot already? Who had the the arpeggiated bass idea? But yeah, you and uh, and then whoever it was that had the idea for the arpeggiated bass. That's what got us going here. So we got to like take some other people's. Uh, uh, suggestions. All right. Now I'm going to, what I was thinking in terms of chords is, um, going with this idea of taking the same MIDI and continuing to add new elements with it is to actually, all right. And I want to take, let's re-record this again. All right. And what sense should we use now? I'm, 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 I should load up some fancy plugin or whatever, but I'm going to keep it simple. Let's just throw analog in there. All right. So it's kind of like, I don't want this to turn into the same thing, but let's do a chord in front of it and just do a minor triad. I mean, this is like the simplest thing. But, you know, minor three semitones up and then seven semitones up for a fifth. And let's go in here. I'm actually going to reduce the voices to four. Why am I doing that? Just so I don't get, if I have a longer release, I mean, it won't overlap so much. All right. And let's um, take that up an octave. All right. Maybe you can see where I'm going with this already. We have... Our release is too long. What happens if I add another note? No, that's too much. Now, all right, the reason I was thinking about reducing the number of voices to see if I could make it glide sometimes. This is a weird thing, but. That's a maybe. I don't even know if this is going to work. It might be too much, but let's see how that sounds. So it's a little bit busy, but I think it kind of it kind of fits in the in the frequency spectrum. Like I, I don't mind that. Like I don't want it to be too I, I want it to I don't know. I don't know what I want it to be. I want it to like add rhythm and energy and harmony at the same time, but maybe it's too busy. And I'm thinking maybe I can accentuate certain notes and reduce and maybe reduce others or remove others. So all right. Right. So I'm going to play around with this a little bit. It's just a two bar pattern pretty much. Something, I'm hearing it in my head a certain way, and I'm not sure if I'm seeing it and doing what I'm hearing, but. Yeah, all right. I, I, 
I'm thinking. I'm thinking about it. I, I, it, I'm at this point. I, I know I was saying I want to like kind of do it and then move forward, but I'm getting stuck on this one. But what I'm trying to do is like, maybe I just need to get rid of. Maybe I just need to simplify it. I'm trying to like make certain st- notes, no, certain stabs, kind of come out a little bit more. Maybe that's all I needed. Maybe it needed to be that simplified. And I'm also using velocity to like accentuate certain chords over other notes. Maybe it's too short. Maybe I want it to be. Now it's getting to be like Dave Clark Red 2. <laughs> some velocity to there that's better All right i'm gonna i don't know compress this saturate this make it sound bigger put an effect on it i don't know maybe a little reverb would be good torn and originally when i first th- put it in there and it was just the, s- the same velocities and it was more consistent i liked it kind of a little bit better and then i was thinking oh i want certain stabs to come out but it sounds thin now all right the sound needs to be better but I don't know. What do you guys think? Where are we at? Let's consider this. We've got about 15 minutes left. We don't have to rush. This is just starting a track. We don't have to like do the whole thing in an hour. But let's think about where we are right now. We've got the kick drum. We've got the bass line. We've got some percussion. And now we've got, I'm trying to work in some chord stabs. And I'm still trying to make it fit with that rhythm, with that MIDI that we started with from the arpeggiator and everything. So let's see, we're seeing some suggestions. MA says needs delay in space. Yeah, well, that's going to make it more dubby, right? More spacey. I like that for sure. And, you know, just throwing a reverb on there real quick just to hear what that might do. Um, Luminous Cloud is suggesting something Gator Oscillator. Simple Sam says, I like this style of techno. Yeah, me too. Uh, Oval Shrimp saying syncopated notes. All right. Doug is uh, suggesting a gate on the riff to see what happened. That's what I do when I need accented rhythm. Yeah, like a gate kind of chopping it up louder, softer, that kind of thing. And that's sort of what I was thinking with chip playing with the velocities. Um, Rolling synth sound. Sean Hodson is saying some sort of rolling synth sound. What do you mean rolling? Like I usually think of rolling in terms of the groove and the bass, like the whole feel of it. But I'm, I'm wondering what you mean by synth wise like if you mean like something melodic or something on the bass sort of oriented direction push uh oval shrimp also says push the chord accent back sooner in the loop so like all right so that would be create some kind of rhythmic variation and uh alternating kind of talking back and forth between the bass and the the chord stabs so and then yeah again netrunner saying what about some effects on a return track like adding space to the sound de- adding sort of depth and dimension to this sound but i'm i'm going to get there but i'm a little more concerned with the basic groove first i think all right so i think what what uh, oval shrimp is suggesting is you know maybe it doesn't maybe it would be good if it did syncopate against the bass rather than playing exactly with it so if I created some sort of variation. All right. I'm trying to do this on, I want, it's on 30 second notes. I don't want 30 second notes. I want 16 notes. So let's go in here and change this to 16 notes. Is that what you meant? like 
I'm off the rails now. Tightrope walk, I'm telling you. I don't know. Something, uh, I, I, I'm still kind of, all right, let me undo this. Let's go back a little bit. now. If I want to use unison detuning, it's, it's going to take away from my polyphony. I think it, it's making me want to do something dubby. Let's see what happens if we put a reef on it. I just realized my first instinct with this, I should have just stuck with it and moved on to the next one. I mean, I think that this is a teachable moment, right? Like this is me getting stuck. I'm trying to play this game where I go, I, I'm taking suggestions from you and then kind of going with my gut feeling. And now I'm getting stuck, right? And I'm sure this happens to all of us where we're like making a track and we're like, ah, oh, what do I do now? Um, it's good to learn how to recognize those things and like figure out how to, get unstuck or maybe if it's not working try something else i mean honestly like if i i'm not i'm not gonna hit do, undo a hundred times but like if i kind of go back i like that better I mean, I like it matching. I honestly, now I have to fix it. The, the sound's messed up, but I like it's keeping it's keeping the energy of the of the bass. It's keeping the original. I have to fix the sound. Sounds so weird. I like that it's a little weird and messy. But I want to get it back to that, like it's short and tight. It's not like genius techno, but this, I, I should just go with this and move forward. Because this groove is working better than the other thing, all right? So I think that's, that's where we're at. So let's try to fit in one more new, at least one more new thing before we call it a day, right? And I think we, all right, this is our chord I mean, it isn't like chord stab or occasional chord. It's, it's adding a harmonic element, but it's sort of fitting in with the basic rhythm, right? It's following the same rhythm as the bass layer. And it, this would be easy to arrange, just kind of bringing these things in and out, filtering them up and, up and down and bringing drums in and out. And that could be, that could be it. But I think, all right, we can, we can maybe try the donk because <laughs> someone suggested that and I think it's funny. 
and generally it's that's kind of like it's like an fm sound usually that you you know an fm synth makes a perfect donk basically um and this reverse pad swell idea i kind of liked <laughs> what is this cosmic j john selway broke my casio tone <laughs> Luminous Cloud wants to throw in an electro break with these chords and remove the 4-4, but hey, it's Techno Saturday. Yeah, you could easily, you know, you can turn it into electro, just change the beat. All And all we have is a kick and a couple of weird percussion sounds right now. It's not even, like, polished and, and finalized yet. Who knows where this will go? All right. I'm not in love with that hi-hat, by the way, so I'm going to... I like it even in the background like that. Let's pump up this. Let's put a compressor on those chords a little bit. rescue. Reverse pad swell or donk. I mean, I'm going to throw an operator on here and make, make something metallic and kind of got a donk. That's not right, is it? We're in donk territory. Once you start hearing this metallic, that's yeah. I like these sounds with lots of reverb on them actually. Like this by itself, it's kind of kind of cheesy, but if I do like uh I don't know. There's some hybrid reverb preset. That sounds much cooler. Woo. It's not working. It's not, <laughs> it's, it's kind of not working. It, it kind of needs to be a new track. Like that's like a, it's like a whole new bass sound, right? It's like I'm making a whole new track now. That's okay. Yeah, it doesn't fit. I like it by itself though. I don't mind that. If I look at this as just an idea idea generating session where we're uh, um, coming up with ideas. Uh, maybe I've started two tracks today with you guys. Why not? To donk or not to donk? That is the question. Now, Hector is suggesting remove the low frequencies and maybe it will fit. And you're right. Sometimes things will fit, you know, mix wise. Like, uh, and we, if we take away the sub, all right, I'll take your suggestion. Let's try that. 
Let's high pass this like crazy. Still, still kind of buried back there. And it's, but if I think of it as like a percussion sound, maybe. like a drum now it still doesn't quite fit with the 16 no bass line but I don't mind it as much as I did before nah. how did I get over there what happens if I change the waveform it's got some rumble to it now like a little growl underneath I don't care if it fits the other thing or not. I like that. I like that we made a donk and made a good one, right? It's not a cheesy donk. It's a good donk. Cool. There I go again, forgetting to be on the main, the main view. All right. Hector says that is a nice element to add tension. I agree. Not so bad. I think, I feel like we kind of, I kind of, we kind of succeeded today in, sort of what we tried to do, right? Okay. Back to the over-the-shoulder view. I'm going to wrap it up. It's 2 o'clock. Got some family stuff to attend to. And, yeah, I feel like we did okay today. We got a track started. I got to interact with you guys a little bit. You gave me some ideas. And it worked out. And we also managed to kind of look at some you know, sort of techniques here, like in terms of using the MIDI devices. And these are, you know, there's nothing super complex here, but the, and then the conceptual idea of, you know, taking one element and then using it as the basis to do the next element, right? You can kind of play around with that. And uh, I mean, you probably could make a whole track starting with like one MIDI clip. If it has enough information in, in it to play around with, you could just keep using that same starting point and modify it to work with each successive uh, element that you add. You know, and it's going to not work for everything. We Okay, we a reverse pad swell, I'm not going to take that from the baseline MIDI. Like, that's that's a totally different thing. But it worked for this these rhythmic elements. It worked for, like, playing some random drum sounds. I was, that, that, that surprisingly turned out much better than I expected. And then using that same MIDI to, you know, play the chords that follow the bass. And that's kind of a classic techno move to do anyway is to have layers of the same sequence on different sounds. So, and then just for fun, we, we, we got a donk. And I'm thinking probably if I were to keep that, I would sort of start a new track with it because I feel like it doesn't quite fit the vibe of the other one. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. I'm going to finish this track. Maybe we'll like bring it back another time and we'll continue. Or I'll do some work on it in between and then you guys can see where we're at and see where we're going to go with it, you know, arrange it a little bit. But... Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with me today and having this little uh, adventure, interactive adventure, and uh, enjoy your week. Uh, once again, take a look at what we've got on offer from 343 Labs. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, definitely, and uh, do that whole thumbs-up thing. Let us know you love us, and we'll see you next week. Thanks a lot, everybody. Adios.